Welcome to another pixelforlife.com video tutorial. In today's lesson, we're going to learn how to create a cool clay render that is not only realistic, but very easy to do in the default Maya software using Mental Ray. Why do we need to use Mental Ray? Well, let me show you. Here I have my camera, and I'm going to go ahead and hit the render button. And you'll see this scene render out, and it looks really bad. And by really bad, I mean it looks really, really bad. So we need to, first of all, fix this ASAP. And the way we're going to do this is, of course, by using Mental Ray. Now, Mental Ray by itself can be kind of confusing and a little tricky, so that's why we're going to kind of cover some of the basics here. Um, the first thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that you have no materials on any of your objects in the scene. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to select the whole thing, you're going to right click, go to assign existing material and um, click on Lambert 1. If you do not currently have Lambert 1 in this menu, go ahead and click on assign new material. And when that comes up, go ahead and click on blend. And when that happens, you're going to rename this to clay render final. All right. Now, from there, you're then going to go to Window, Rendering Editors, and Hypershade. Still keeping your um, objects selected, when Hypershade comes up, you'll see that you can then go to Edit and Delete Unused Nodes, and that way you have everything else cleared out of the from the default um, Maya needed things, except for the clay render, of course, because it is currently being used. So with that, let's go ahead and click on that, and we need to do a little bit of editing to this material. Now this material is going to be very simple. Um, it's not it's not real complex, but the first thing I want to do is I want to lighten that up to where it's just a very, very light, light gray, almost almost white, literally almost white, um, but not not quite, because like freaking white is freaking white, and we don't want that. So just a light gray. We then want to go and adjust our diffuse down to around 0.5. Now the reason I did the color first is so that this would then be offset by it because otherwise you won't really get exactly what you're needing. Now this specular roll off, I want to adjust that down to about um, 0.2, give or take, and just kind of get it somewhere close. The specular color, you want to get rid of it so that it is completely black. Reflectiveness, completely off, zero. This Centricity, you want to adjust that down to about 0.5, and that is literally going to be our material. Now, I know that it looks like it's kind of a gray color, like not bright enough right now, but trust me, it's going to be when we're done. So, we currently have this camera in here. If you don't know how to create a camera, you just go up to create and click on camera and camera, and then you can select the camera, go into any one of these panels, go to panel, look through, select the camera, and you'll then be looking through it so that you can adjust it using your uh, keys to really get the look that you're going for. Um, I find it very easy, uh, much more easier to do it that way. So with that, uh, we now need to do a couple of things. We've, I've decided that the, the easiest and quickest way to do this kind of rendering is with the Mental Ray um, Sun section, uh, which I'm going to show you now. Uh, you just go into the render settings. You need to make sure to click on Mental Ray. If you don't currently have Mental Ray um, loaded, then you don't have it listed here. Um, just uh, do a search on Google, type in how to enable Mental Ray, um, and it's it's really easy. But um, I didn't want to cover that in this lesson. So then from that, we're then going to click on indirect lighting, and under indirect lighting, you're going to see two options at the top. One is for HDRI images, which is going to be image based lighting, and the second is going to be the sun. Uh, physical sun and sky environment that we're going to create. And it's really simple. You just have to hit create. And from there, you are going to basically be done. Now, later on, you can go into the final gathering quality um, and also the accuracy and adjust these. But because I'm trying to do faster renders um, just for the sake of the processing power on this computer for recording and all that, I'm not going to do that. Um, so with that, I then need to go into, the, on this camera view, go to lighting, and I want to put on use all lights. And you can see here that the shadowing changes drastically. 
And the reason that happens is because this light that is here, which is right here, which is a directional light, is now the main sunlight of our scene. Now this sunlight, um, I'm actually going to drag it up so that it's more in like a realistic place, but um, if you actually see it, if I go to panels and I click on, uh, if I click on looks, looks like the camera, you can see here that the light is literally right pointed straight down into this area. And that's why we're getting the highlights on the top, but the shadows all on the bottom. What I actually want to do is I want to rotate this. And you can see here that the shadows change along with that as I rotate it. Okay, and You can adjust this to however you like. Um, I, I personally like it from this side because I'm trying to also get the shadow from this wall up here to kind of drape over those as well. So kind of like high noon type of thing like that. Looks to me just right. Uh, from there I want to go to the window uh, render uh, or, uh, rendering editors and hypershade. Now the reason I'm going into hypershade is because yes I'm currently selecting a light and we do need to adjust some of this stuff but before I do that I want to click on my lights uh, our utilities, I'm sorry, and you can see here I have these three um, sections here that have been created that were not here before. And the first one is the exposure, second one is the actual physical uh, sky itself, and then I have the actual sun. And these need to have these have some adjustments that need to be um, adjusted on them. And the reason that I want to adjust these is because Without the adjustment, it's going to look very washed out. But before I go into editing those, let's go ahead and uh, exit out of that. Let's change this to... Uh, my bad. Window. Uh, saved layouts. And I want to do... Um, I can do uh, hypershade render and perspective here. Come on. All right, so now you see I have the hypershade up on the top, um, and I'm actually going to change that to look through selected camera. Uh, look through selected camera. Like that. Go ahead and turn on that shading, and you can see here now down at the bottom, um, and this here is just going to be my perspective view. Right, which I, that way I can look around. This here is the rendering view, um, and if I hit the render button right now, you it will do a render. And from that render, you can see that it's very washed out and very white looking. Now this is not a bad thing. Um, it'd be bad if it was dark. <laughs> it being light is the easiest way for us to adjust things. Now some people on their clay renders prefer having it very very bright and white like this, and that's perfectly fine. This is all about personal taste. So whatever you feel com most comfortable with, go ahead and do that. But I need to adjust some things for myself. So I'm going to go into my um, hypershade once again. Come on. All right, go to my utilities, click on my exposure. And the first thing that I want to uh, adjust is this gamma. And I want to put it down to 1.8. And that's just kind of going to darken the whole scene just a little bit for me. Not a lot, but a little bit. Now under the actual physical sky, um, I want to adjust the haze of, of this. Because that it's going to allow a little bit more light to come through. A little bit more of that yellowish tone. So I'm going to put that at about 4. And the reason I'm using 4 is because it's a bigger scene. If it's a smaller, uh, less complex scene... Do that haze a little bit less. Never go over around five though, because it starts to get really washed out. And you're not going to want that. This red and blue shift is basically just allowing you to select how much red you want in the image. And I'm just going to put like 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.05. My bad. Saturation, same thing. I'm going to put that at two. I'm not going to get real crazy with it. And I'm actually going to leave all of these alone because they're this, they're they're all linked as the same thing um, from the other side. So. We don't even have to worry about those. So I'm going to go ahead and do another test render. But I'm going to go ahead and click on um, this button here, which is the keep image, which keeps one camera frame. Go ahead and render it out. And you can see here it's starting to get more of a yellowish tone. Um, probably a little bit too dark. Um, 
So we're definitely going to have to adjust it a little bit more. Yeah, that's too dark. Uh, or it's not really that it's too dark. It's that it's too um, pastel, too yellow. So we need to adjust that. What the heck? And uh, I'm going to go back and put my gamma back up to 2, first of all. And then the haze, I'll put to 2. And I'll go ahead and um, then I'll hit uh, render in that. I don't want to keep that one because that one was terrible. It was going in the wrong direction. So now we go and we get, we're getting a little bit better. You can see that that color is coming through. And it might actually be just right. So I'm going to hit keep image on that. And once that's done rendering. So I'm then going to go ahead and make this bigger so we can uh, look at this a little bit easier. And you can see here that's the last render. And that was the first render which was very white and very washed out. And then the second image it has more of that yellowish tone to it which is more like the actual clay. Not only that, but it also has brought in the blue from the sky, um, which right now is not a big deal because it's just clay. But when it, eventually when it actually has the um, uh, textures on it and all that, that coloring is really going to come in handy. So you're definitely going to want that. And that haze, I'm actually going to put that down to 1.5. Red and blue shift, I'll put down to that, that to about down to 0.3. Saturation, I'll put a 1.3. And um, I'll go ahead and render that out now. And that should be right around the perfect settings uh, for what we're after. And you can see here it definitely looks a lot better. It has been, We've brought in a little bit more white to the yellow area. And the blue has definitely been toned down a little bit because it was a little strong. And that is actually looking really good.